Hey guys, welcome back. So we're jumping into Devil's Reign the Superior 4, which is pretty much the mini event of Otto Octavius getting revenge on Mephisto. Because with Mephisto taking away the Peter Parker memories from Otto, he now believes that at that time, having Peter's memories made him someone better because of the things that Octavius achieved when he still had those memories. So it's like now in Devil's Reign, he feels like he's been dropped down a few notches and he needs to crank it up. And that's really what all this is about. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so with us jumping into part one of the Superior Four, this is very much like Otto Octavius having his own event within an event, with him making it really clear early on as far as his motives in Devil's Reign, like we'd seen with him ratting out Reed Richards, getting him and Sue locked up, while at the same time making Ben and Johnny fugitives on the run, and doing all of this so he can get his hands on the Baxter building so that Otto would have access to all of Reed's technology and research. And with the Superior Four, we pick up right from the cliffhanger, where we had seen Otto Octavius use Reed's interdimensional gate to bring into the 616 what turns out to be three other versions of him which essentially like this is where the plot thickens because with this team that he's put together with the hulk that is him from earth 8816 ghost rider which is otto from earth 1666 and the wolverine otto from earth 9712 who's changed his uniform since we've seen him last but interestingly enough in their alternate realities they've all had a version of the abusive father role in their lives much like otto but in the different cases when otto had a different father this changed the outcome of who he became in each instance and it's like when we're shown like a bit of a flashback for each one of them like the Torbert Banner, Brian Banner, like he very much just seems like Brian Banner, which kind of has me convinced that any version of Brian Banner across the multiverse, like he's just a bad father. Like that's just a fixed event. But out of all these guys from the details that we get later on, the Ghost Rider Otto backstory, his is sounding the craziest so far, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But for Otto, with him bringing these other variants of himself here, his initial plan is to start off with this group as the Superior Four, so that with them, together they would search throughout the multiverse, for other superior variants of himself to where then eventually Otto Octavius would build up to the Council of Ox, which from the sound of it, it seems like Otto wants to put together his version of the Council of Reeds by using Reed's technology to fill up the Baxter building with a ton of different Ottos and under his lead, they would ultimately just control everything. And doing this would also serve his purpose for these other autos, because at their core, each of these autos desires superiority to some measure. And it's kind of funny, like when they're in here with access to all of Reed's information, and in what is practically 616 Otto's lab now, but initially when they get in this conversation, the Hulk variant, he assumes that Otto just wants to get put back in Peter Parker's body. But rather quickly, 616 Otto explains that for one, that's not his plan here, but even if he was trying to do that, the chances of him making that happen, they've more or less been stripped away from him. And this is something that goes back to Superior Spider-Man Volume 2, back when Otto had always found himself one step behind an alternate version of Norman Osborn, so when at that time Otto didn't believe that he could defeat this Norman in his current form, but instead he believed that he needed to become the old Otto in order to do it, which is what then led him to making a deal with Mephisto, with Otto initially offering his soul, but then Mephisto was like, I might already have it, or I just may not even want it. He wasn't even sure. But as a counter offer, Mephisto agreed to do this in exchange for the memories and the moments and the experiences that Otto still had from Peter Parker, which at the time were really the main things that Otto had taken away that had made him a better person. So it's like now in Superior 4, when he expresses these things to Otto Banner, 616 Otto lets him know that this evolution as he would mention it, or even progress as he would say, it was pillaged from his mind and him bringing these three other Ottos here and following through with his plans like this is his revenge on Mephisto which right away gives us a lot more insight than what we had just got in Devil's Reign with us now knowing that okay a lot like Wilson Fisk Otto Octavius also has a chip on his shoulder just that in each case it's just two completely different red devils but then from here they leave to make their way to their first world and it's like with doing this 616 Otto quickly gets them to just get up and go because Otto Banner wanted to check the numbers first but 616 Otto's like nah we good and as soon as he got that gate open he was like alright now let's go and on their first stop, they make their way to Earth 5069, which is an Earth that is totally new to my knowledge, 
but all we really know when they get there is that it's some post extinction version of earth to where 616 auto mentions that the trees are screaming with the howls of goats but also when they get here like your hulk auto he makes notice that there's gamma in the soil to where then he makes mention of the green door which is a clear as day reference to al ewing's immortal hulk but also right away with auto hulk mentioning the green door that right away lets us know that one he's immortal because the green door is what hulks use to come back from the dead but at the same time it also raises a lot of questions with the immortal hulk series already stretching throughout space and time and into the next cosmos to where now it has me wondering like how exactly did this play out on different alternate earths but that's also something i think we get another hint towards but we'll revisit that in a little bit but while they're here they run into the iron man of this universe who goes by the name iron scab and at a first impression he knows that these guys are from another world and he can tell that the first three are a version of ghost rider wolverine and also hulk but he also tells him that the whole six arms thing is new to him and he hates it and when 616 auto asks him what about me do you know who i am say my name and quite literally this iron scab guy cannot identify auto to save his life which immediately throws Otto for a loop with him believing that he's a fixed variant across all realities. And this right away hits 616 Otto in the fields with this guy not being able to identify who he is. But also while they're here in this world, Otto's arms stop working. And because of that, he just opens the gate for them to go back. And the Ghost Rider Otto, he just cooks the Iron Scab guy because of the countless number of souls beneath that world who are craving vengeance because of that guy's billion dollar blood empire. But when they get back the Hulk Otto, he gets Doc Ock's arms working again, but he lets him know that whatever had happened with them on that earth, it had nothing to do with mechanical failure. But then as soon as he says this, your Ghost Rider Otto, he lets 616 Otto know that his arms were lined with sigils and with seeing this he recognizes what it is. And he tells Otto this is the devil's bargain, there's no way to make it right, Mephisto always wins. And it's like with seeing this and knowing that Otto's deal with Mephisto, it's like his motivation for even going on this multiversal conquest. But then it's like with us knowing that and seeing this happen to Otto, and then on top of that your Ghost Rider Otto, he just calls him out on it and right away it just has me thinking of the count of red like we had talked about back when we were talking heroes reborn and heroes return back when mephisto had expressed that pretty much everything that he had did in that event it was just to give an example to 615 other mephistos what just one of them were capable of and at this point i know it's kind of early to say that mephisto will get involved to any measure within the whole superior four thing but i also wouldn't be surprised if he used their deal to just pull the plug on otto's whole plan but nonetheless at this point with 616 auto like you can tell that there's a bit of trouble in paradise so to speak and out of these variants the hulk auto he seems to be the one who's trying to bring in the logic time after time while 616 auto is just like he's gonna make this work one way or the other and what we come to find out is like all through the night and through the next day while the other variants were asleep and it's throughout this time where auto stayed up and searched throughout the multiverse for other versions of himself and it's here where he slightly changes his course from wanting to build a council of octaviuses but instead looking to be something more with him believing that himself and these three other variants collectively with the technology of reed richard that they're already superior to a council of reeds but also with 616 auto staying up all night and scouring the multiverse he had ended up finding 3409 other autos or other variants of himself to where he believes that there's only one of them who understands the kind of power that's needed to defeat them and for this reason he sets out for them to go after this variant first but along the way they kind of talk about the idea of what this could turn into and whether they're building an army instead of a council and hulk auto even brings up how them going after other autos kind of falls within the conservations of momentum which i'm no expert on but from what i'm aware it's like the general idea that a closed system cannot be affected by the processes happening within itself but at the same time with them pulling this off they're still well aware or at least the hulk auto he's well aware like he seems to be the most reasonable one but he also points out that what they're doing it could have a cause and effect to where it sends out a destructive wave throughout the multiverse but even with this said just like before these other three autos they just kind of roll with 616 auto which from here takes them to earth 2902 and again on this earth where we have like no backstory and we can only assume on how this place turned from a concrete jungle into fern gully but just from the looks of it it appears to have been a regular city at some point or even world for that matter which had eventually found plants as a solution to decarbonization and a number of other wonders but of course with them traveling to a new earth auto lets the other 
others know to be careful of these plants because on a different world any of these things can be just completely alien to their immunization. But after this when the auto wolverine picks up the scent of the auto of this world they go after him and here where they find him this version is very much a spider-man version of Otto, who goes by the name of tj and from the looks of things tj just stands for torbert jr with this auto being named after his father which also goes a bit into his origin which we'll talk about in a little bit and initially 616 auto he tries to quickly make his claim and tell tj he's not here to hurt him he just wants to teach him but for tj right off the rip he's not trying to hear any of that because for one he knows all about 616 technology and he's more or less known for years that at some point 616 Otto was going to make his way over to his world. But also with him being familiar with 616 Otto's history, TJ lets him know that it's really sad how Otto is just fixed on trying to get back to the better days of his past. And TJ doesn't only just share those choice words for Otto, but he's informed quite a bit on all of these guys because he calls out Otto Banner, asking him if he's told the others that he's immortal, which now has me thinking when Otto Banner had asked the other Ottos about the green door, he was probably just testing them to see what they knew. New. And then TJ goes on to call out Ghost Rider Otto for killing his father, who had sold that Otto's soul to the devil, which was how he became Ghost Rider. And with TJ just giving all this tea away, like that had to be the main kicker, because I've heard of the whole thing of parents putting utilities in their children's name, which is crazy enough. But the spirit of vengeance? Then no, no, that's just going too far. But nonetheless, all this reckless talk, it just gets the mess beaten out of TJ. But really, all he was trying to do is tell these other guys is that they're suffering from the same problem that their father has. Because the one thing that all of the autos of the Superior Four have in common is their torment from lesser minds, which in their case manifests in the way of them seeking to be superior. But for 616 Otto and the Superior Four, in their father's case, it only manifested in baser instincts, which for those guys was abuse that they had to endure. But in the case of TJ, who again I'm assuming it stands for Torbert Jr., when he tells these guys his origin, it very much explains how he overcame that torment and he didn't turn into his father or just another one of these guys. Because for TJ, when his father Torbert died, he felt liberated. He celebrated it at a young age, but that liberation pushed him to become something amazing, rather than repeating his father's actions or again just becoming one of these guys. And it's here where TJ lets 616 Otto know that 616 Otto could have been the best of all of them, and he still can be. But in response, he just lets TJ know, like, look, I didn't put in all this work and head all this way over here just to have my mind changed through a really good speech. And it's here that we find out that back on Earth 5069, where we had seen Iron Scab and the trees sounded like they had souls in them. And before they left, he had taken a synthetic blood parasite and combined it with his tech to create a device to access TJ's mindscape and drink his intelligence. Because for Doc Ock, he knew if he couldn't convince TJ to join his cause or his army, then he would just add TJ's mind to his own rather than just just leave him out there as a liability. But even with Doc Ock doing this, I can't help but think that with him choosing this method, that he's pretty much just shot himself in the foot. Because if Mephisto ever comes back into the mix, I could just imagine that TJ would be used as like a trick up his sleeve, so to speak. But then it's after this where we then jump over to Atlantis on Earth 7214. And it's on this Earth where we come across another variant who, if any other, I believe this is the one that Doc Ock really should be worried about. Because for one, when we come across this guy, it appears like he's just taking the water out of Atlantis and he's just beating the city to the ground with it. And it's either that or he's the reason why Atlantis is underwater on this Earth to begin with. But when we come across this guy, he's also aware of everything that 616 Doc Ock is doing, as well as his multiversal pursuit and Doc Ock killing TJ. And with this variant observing the actions and the effects of what Doc Ock has been doing for some time now, he's decided at this point that it's time for him to step in. And as we get the reveal of who this variant is, we also find that he views Doc Ock as a dilettante. Like Doc Ock has recently found an interest in what he's doing and he sees him just going on about this crusade without any real commitment or knowledge. But for this guy who we find is the Supreme Octopus, he identifies as Doc Ock's superior and he believes that he is the ending that Doc Ock seeks to be. And he might be right about that because this guy's got a lot going on. He appears to be Sorcerer Supreme in his world. He's Doctor Doom. He's already got the Otto arms and the rings around his hands look a lot like the rings around Otto's arms on Earth 5069. But just from a first impression of him talking about this invisible war between him and 616 Otto, it almost sounds like he's already started doing the same thing. So who knows if he's already been to a number of different Earths already. But when this picks back up, I'm sure we'll find out. Thank you.
All right, so when we jump back in, we start off with the Supreme Octopus, who like we'd seen before is the alternate version of Otto Octavius, who had recently noticed your 616 Doc Ock being reckless throughout the multiverse, along with the other members of the Superior Four. But also with the Supreme Octopus making notice of Doc Ock, he also makes the observation that Doc Ock and himself are not the same. And really like just off appearance alone, that's a statement that he doesn't have to sell too hard. But then to even take it a step further, when he goes down a list of these different variants of himself, who of course are also variants of Doc Ock, but when the Supreme Octopus brushes through these few, like one when Norman Osborn killed him in order to cover up what he had done to him, another reality where he was killed by President Modoc, who just wanted to make an example out of him, and another where it looks like he almost became the leader, but instead at a young age he died of a gamma overdose, and another one where he got lost in the forest, but no one cared to look for him and he just didn't make it. But even with him just brushing through these, unlike 616 Doc Ock, the Supreme Octopus, he understands that throughout the multi Multiverse, most other autos, in comparison, they peak at just being an impoverished child from a broken home. In the Supreme Octopus, he understands that throughout the multiverse, what he's become, with him being master of the mystic arts, leader of a nation, and his world sorcerer supreme, that he is the exception, not the rule, which is vastly different from Doc Ock, who just believes that there's a ton of different great Ocks out there. In this way of thinking, it really separates the two, because with the Supreme Octopus just randomly picking four other variants, he quickly sees the concept constant as far as what most other autos out there are like. But back over on Earth 616, you couldn't tell Doc Ock that this was the case. Because when we jump back to him here at the Baxter building, he's been using the bridge for hours, with him looking for other variants of himself whose minds are worth siphoning, with also searching for potential universes to conquer. But with him literally spending hours using the bridge, the other autos get fed up, and the Hulk autos more or less like, okay, that's enough. He spent enough time on that thing. I'm about to go in there and end this. But we come to find out that also during this time where Otto's been searching, not only has he discovered with going to watch himself, Himself, killed another version of himself that it had created a time paradox but even the process of him looking over these different worlds it expands his knowledge but right in the middle of this he's then interrupted by the supreme octopus who gives doc ock a single and final warning to stop what he's doing because when the dust settles the supreme octopus will remain supreme while doc ock is just going to end up dead or exiled which right away has doc ock shook because prior to this point he was not at all aware of the supreme octopus and immediately after this interruption he's then interrupted again when Hulk Otto snatches off the visor and yanks him out of the bridge. And with this happening, I can understand the frustration because how you gonna have company over but a majority of the time you got a headset on and you're just peeping into the multiverse. So I get it, it's kinda rude. But with Doc Ock getting snatched out the bridge, he lets them know that he had came into contact with a multiversal consciousness which made him aware that he was being observed. And he lets the others know like this could be serious business and not just because of the cause and effect of his previous actions but also with the addition of someone who is insanely powerful on a multiversal scale peeping over his shoulder. But the other guys, they're not trying to hear this because they believe at this point Otto has just got this crazy obsession and on top of that Doc Ock believes that if it wasn't for him then these guys wouldn't have been able to access the multiverse almost as if they should thank him for bringing them in but your Wolverine Ock he ain't going for that because him and the others they've seen the multiverse before but then when he tells Doc Ock that the difference between him and the others here is that at least they were smart enough to steer clear of their other variants and that insult to Doc Ock's intelligence just springboarded the whole group into a three-on-one brawl to where at one point Ghost Rider auto hit Doc Ock with the penance stare which Doc Ock kind of wiggles his way out of or he just brushes off a bit easier than I would have expected and I mean I get it like with an actual penance stare from the real Ghost Rider whether it be Johnny Blaze, Danny Ketch, Robbie Reyes like even in their case there's levels to it to where you might see one person get completely incinerated and another turn just to a vegetable but in this case with Doc Ock seemingly brushing it off because he refuses to quit and that kind of had me like mm, I don't know but then again it is also gauged on how much someone's done or how bad it was as well as if that individual even cares or has any remorse. And with Doc Ock's history of attempted murders, kidnapping, maiming, and body snatching, like you would think he would sizzle just a little, but that's neither here or there. But through the course of this fight, a piece of wreckage hits the bridge and everybody gets sucked in. And also with them getting taken through so quickly, Doc Ock is not able to grab the panic switch, which like we'd seen before would be the only way that they can make their way home. And when they get pulled through, they arrive on Earth 7214, which like we had seen before, this is the same 
same earth where we initially had came across the supreme octopus where we had got a brief demonstration of his power when we seen him attacking atlantis and it's pretty much here with the superior four they kind of just fall into the aftermath but it doesn't take too long with them being here where they notice that whatever had happened here was a mass extinction event with there also being signs of large amounts of radiation left in its wake and pretty quickly doc ock he puts together that they didn't just stumble across this place but rather they were brought here and before he can really get into his theory of who brought them here the others already knew that he was going back to the whole multiversal consciousness thing which right away had your hulk auto and your wolverine auto fighting over who was going to shut him up first but in the middle of them fighting over who's going to fight him a tsunami then breaks their way seemingly coming from out of nowhere and when this happens your auto wolverine and ghost rider they dip and hulk auto he just stands there because i mean for him it doesn't matter which then leaves doc ock like seconds before he's just destroyed but before he's crushed by the tsunami he snatched up and taken to Earth 8968 by the Supreme Octopus who does this really just to get a moment to talk to Otto alone and more or less give Otto the opportunity to bow before him with the Supreme Octopus being his clear superior. And with the way this is done, it's almost like the Supreme Octopus, he pulled Doc Ock by himself to kind of spare him the embarrassment. But even with Doc Ock admitting that he got caught off guard, he insists that at some point he'll get revenge. But then it's here where Supreme Octopus lets him know that he'd pulled him to that earth with that destroyed Atlantis to give Doc Ock a demonstration of what he could be. To where from here, the Supreme Octopus, he starts to go down his list of achievements. To where for starters, he mentions that he's liquefied Shumagorap. To where with that one, I'm not gonna front, I'm I kind of want receipts for that one, buddy. I don't know. But also he mentions that he's defeated Dormammu and that he's burnt Null to an ash, which for all we know, it just adds King of Black to the list of all his titles. But with a list like that, much like a lot of the other things we've seen throughout the Superior Four so far, I'm really just taking it with a grain of salt. But it's here where he lets Otto know that he understands that Otto's not going to just serve under someone as in the form of a true subordinate. Because like we've seen, even with Doc Ock working with Wilson Fisk, that in itself was a means to an end. But with the Supreme Octopus saying this, he brings back the other three autos, which right away has Doc Ock kind of like, oh, okay, you guys are back. Hey, let's jump them. And initially these guys, especially Ghost Rider Otto, they more or less have the notion that this isn't going to go well. But once again, against their better judgment, they engage. And when this happens, the Supreme Octopus, he lets the other three autos know that 616 Otto, with everything he's doing, he has these guys operating well under their potential. And he extends his invitation to them, letting them know if they kneel before him, he'll truly expand their mind. And for a moment, here Doc Ock he tries to do the team assemble thing and get everyone to attack the Supreme Octopus at the same time but he just takes each and every one of them down one by one and even with how he does this like with just chaining up Wolverine Otto and even toasting your Otto Hulk but in any case with each of his counterattacks, you can tell that he's just doing enough to hold these guys back and really just make his point. And even when Ghost Rider Auto figures that he'll do a bit better, like if he has some sort of a mount, so he just grabs a random raptor to give himself a leg up in the fight. But Supreme Octopus just stops him in his tracks by summoning the icy tendrils of Ichthalon, who's like a deep cut ice demon who embodied stagnation and the resistance to change. So even still, it's pretty cool to see him use some of these deep cut incantations from sources that are just not that common these days. But then for Doc Ock, it's here where Supreme Octopus shuts down his arms once again, which from there causes the other three autos to give in because hulk auto he recognizes that this is the same magic that shut down doc ock's arms in earth 5069 and wolverine auto he just knows when he's lost the fight to where it can turn out to be something that he can learn from and ghost rider auto he just hopes that siding with supreme octopus will result in more lives being saved than lives being lost but also it's here where we get a bit more information about supreme octopus as far as us learning more about his background because with doc ock having his arms and restraints the rest of his body then locks up and it's here where supreme octopus shares that he used to be a surgeon and a talented one at that which within that statement alone it more or less lets us know that this auto had started his life with an origin very similar to that of Stephen Strange but possibly with some kind of difference that involved his father whether his dad ran him off the road or cut his brakes or something like who knows but we at least at this point have the information that the core of his amalgamation it had began with a Doctor Strange like story but with saying this he gives Doc Ock his professional recommendation with him seeing that the restraints on Doc Ock's arms have caused the blood in his body to completely cease from flowing and as a result he tells Doc Ock that they're gonna have to amputate and it's here where the Supreme Octopus and all the other autos rip off all of Doc Ock's arms to where from there Doc Ock is then taken prisoner but while he's here and he has time to think things over and he thinks about how he believes that this Supreme Octopus he relies more on magic than he should and to the point where Otto believes that he's wasting his 
intellect and disrespecting science. And while Otto was in here, he mentions that some of the greatest scientific discoveries, they're made on acts of folly. And he believes that's why for him, though he can't recall his memories of Spider-Man or use any of that anymore, the fact that it happened is still useful to him. And it's with that reasoning that Otto sets his sights on taking the kingdom of the Supreme Octopus as well as every drop of his knowledge. Because even in defeat, Dr. Octopus still sees himself as being the superior, though he's still locked away in the Supreme Sanctorum, which looks like something out of Horizon Forbidden West. But we'll see how this pans out for him. Alright, so at this point we actually jump back to a moment from issue 1, when the Superior Four had made their way to Earth 5069, which at the time was like the barren post-apocalyptic gamma saturated world where they had also ran into the Iron Scab. But during that time when 616 Otto placed a sample of his blood into the gamma saturated soil, it's here where we find that another Otto had grown from that soil because apparently that's how baby autos are made, but with the way that 616 Otto describes this, for him, rather than what he said at the time, when he said he had done this as a method to find the auto of that world, in addition to that, he admits to this being an experiment of sorts, which as it turned out, had spawned an inferior creature that had made its way through the rifts that were created by 616 Otto and the Superior Four, following an unconscious signal within itself. And I know, just that face value, it's a very bizarre concept. But essentially what had happened when Otto did this, he had created his own version of Man-Thing which is how this inferior creature, as Otto would call it, had found him. And as it turns out, this creature had some similar abilities to your traditional Man-Thing, who's guardian of the nexus of all realities, which in Marvel Comics not only gives you access to the multiverse, but also with like what we'd seen in Quasar issue 50, where we got Spawn, Starro, Ren and Stimpy, because the nexus of all realities, it opens possibilities to all realities, and not just limited to the multiverse within Marvel Comics. But I'm pretty sure we talked about that in the WandaVision video, long time ago. But in this case here, this is more or less what we're given. 616 Otto conducted an experiment on Earth 5069, it created a man thing, and this creature made its way through the multiverse and found him, locked within the dungeons of the Supreme Sanctorum on Earth 8968. And initially Otto, he doesn't recognize what this creature is, because at the same time it's not capable of speaking, so it'll just create letters to communicate with Otto, but with this creature breaking him out, and then also identifying to the name Otto, and not long after 616 Otto, he more or less figured it out. And I mean more or less this Otto man thing did spell it out for him, and from here Otto identified with this man thing as the inferior Ock. And so with the inferior Ock breaking Otto out of his cell, right away Otto was like, okay help me kill the supreme guy and I'll give you whatever you want, just follow my lead. But the inferior Ock, he just spelled it out like no and it's here with the inferior Ock latched on to Otto connecting to his mind and putting him in a state to where he's not dead but he's not completely in control either but it's here also where Ock understands what it is that the inferior Ock is looking for and from here Otto lets him know if he helps him get out of here and do what he needs to do then Otto promises that he'll fulfill this request that was made by the inferior Ock but then after this we then jump over to the other autos who are being shown this image and told this story by the supreme Ock, who lets them know that this multiversal war that 616 Ock had started like this image is how it ends and with seeing this initially your wolverine and hulk auto they're kind of skeptical because who knows it could have been deep faked could have been photoshopped there's really no way to be sure at a first look but ghost rider auto makes a point saying that supreme auto doesn't have much of a reason to lie because he didn't have to pull everyone from that tsunami and bring them here but even with that said, you know, like everybody's nice when they want some. And at this point, Supreme Ock, he really hasn't been clear about his motives in his entirety. But it's here where he plans to change that. And to do so, he's taken off all his armor as a gesture of peace. But just before he gets into the details of his offer, he first answers their questions as far as who he is, to where from there he leads into how they fit into his plan. But with Supreme Otto starting off with the who he is part, and it's here where he lets him know that he's Otto Werner von Strange, the last remaining variant after a long and tireless war and in his current position he maintains balance within their multiversal existence and for him after fighting this multiversal war before between different autos he's come to the point now where his position requires an heir or perhaps even multiple heirs but with him telling them more about this multiversal war between different autos that he already fought he lets them know at one point an auto had raised the multiverse killing millions siphoning minds body swapping and it's like with hearing this hulk auto he asks supreme auto if when this happened, if it was 616 Otto. But when Supreme Otto is asked this question, he doesn't answer directly. He just kind of continues the story as they overlook his army of Ox 
and he lets him know that he was born on one of the worlds that the Otto he had mentioned had conquered, on a small camp amongst people who were considered worthless. His people were often beaten, their possessions were taken, so he accepted a satanic deal, which I think is safe to say from Mephisto, but after accepting this power he overthrew the Autobots, and that's Otto like OTTO bots, in case anyone was thinking like the Transformers jumped in here, no, wasn't that. And I'm 99% sure it wasn't the actor either. But after defeating these bots, he used technology to overthrow that Otto, to where from there he then used magic to take over that Otto's kingdom. He's rid the world of diseases, ended global conflicts, and practically created a utopia. But for Supreme Op, after surviving the multiversal war, after he took a delicate stance to not interfere, but with him staying out of the way, he believes that's what caused it to start over again. And because of that, he wants these guys to make sure that another multiversal war doesn't happen. And to help these three Autos understand stand better, he tries to show them the multiverse as he sees it. Because for Supreme Ock, by way of a number of different experiments over the course of decades, along the way he suffered much loss. But also he had gained the ability to control this structure with his mind and gain access to all worlds. And with saying this, Supreme Ock then shows him Earth 7214, which is the Earth where we had seen Supreme Ock for the first time in issue 1. And it's here where he lets them know because of their meddling manifest, and Otto was born as an Atlantean, who would later create a bioweapon that would eradicate water from the multiverse and he lets them know like when they arrived on earth 7214 it's almost like fate had brought them there right when he sunk atlantis to erase that auto's work but then also for these autos to succumb to his power but also with him showing them this, it really seems like there's a larger loop that we're not seeing. With this series starting from the 616 being the beginning, which leads all the way up to the story of the Supreme Ock. Because with showing these guys what he did to Otto on Earth 7214, in that same fashion he goes on to tell them their futures on their worlds, but in this case gone unchecked. To where for Hulk Otto, he attempts to cure himself, but instead he kills millions. In the case of Ghost Rider Otto, billionaires, polluters, warlords, they rule in thrive because he's more focused on average level members of society and in the case of your auto wolverine he just ends up killing everyone but then it's here with him showing them all of this where he tells them because of their collective obsession with conquest before they can more or less be made useful they've got to be reset but fortunately before he can practically lobotomize these guys 616 auto gets there and when supreme ox sees this for one he's surprised that auto even got out but then he makes the offer to auto like if he stands down then he'll remake him into the superior superior Spider-Man. But also with making this offer, the Supreme Ock mentions that he's been making influences on Otto throughout time, telling Otto he's whispered in his ear to make him erase his greatest accomplishments and that he was the one who taught Otto how to summon Mephisto. So it's almost as if Supreme Ock, he's making claims to have had an involvement in Otto's life prior to this point. But Otto refuses to believe that any of that's true. He's taking full credit here for all of his ideas and in some cases a bit more than he probably should. Like as far as the inferior Ock, who he now says was a contingency that he made on Earth 5069, but with the way that Otto looks at it as far as the inferior Ock, though he doesn't say it, he looks at it as something he did that worked in his favor, and with that logic, he's kind of like, I meant to do that, absolutely. Even though we know in this very moment, 616 Otto isn't fully in control, which in a way makes the claims of the Supreme Ock sound a bit more valid. And as far as Otto's concerned, the Supreme Ock, he's only offering things from the past, while Otto, with everything he's doing, he's pressing forward towards the future. Future. And for Otto, even though he hasn't done too well in a number of matchups against the Supreme Ock, he still looks down on the Supreme Ock because Otto knows that he's the prime version of himself, while the Supreme Ock is a derivative of three prime variants. But with the two of these guys going back and forth, the other Ottos, they take this opportunity to break themselves free, with Supreme Ock being distracted. And from here, 616 Otto, with the superior four back together, he moves back into more of that leadership role, and they all work together to coordinate an attack against the Supreme Ock to where then suddenly the killing blow is given by the inferior Ock. And when this is done, Otto puts emphasis on him realizing like even without his arms and all of his technology, it was just Otto that defeated him. And with saying that not just referring to himself, but also the inferior Ock and the others as well. Which really leans more into 616 Otto exercising humility and working with his variants. But even still, like for one, it was kind of strange seeing this supreme Ock who had defeated Null and Shumagorath and so many others to be taken down by these guys and also like with how this happens it very much seems like there was so much more that was supposed to be delivered through this narrative at a slower pace which easily could have went to eight if not four issues and it really seems like the death of supreme Ock, like it had to happen for the narrative of superior four to fit within the deadlines of devil's reign 
and really that's just my guess. I got nothing to back that up, just a few quick thoughts. Because aside from that, there are so many things that are just left open in this story. And even to where it seems like Zack Thompson understood at some point how short this story needed to be, because in this last issue, it really feels like a lot of stuff was shoveled around and crammed in for the possibility of being revisited at a later date. And really just leaving us with the idea of the multiversal war between these different autos being something that now exists as an inevitable loop. But let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments. And so from here, they make their way back by way of the inferior Ock, who uses what's left the Supreme's vestigial mind to make a doorway to Earth 616. And when they get back and make their way to the Baxter building, they fix the gate, Otto fixes his arms, and really from here at this point, there's like two things that need a resolve, with one being Otto fulfilling his promise to the inferior Ock, and then two being Otto fixing the paradox that he created by killing TJ on Earth 2902. And with how this plays out, it almost comes together too perfect, which again feeds into this loop of the multiversal war that we've been teased with this whole issue. Because for those last two things that need to be done, the inferior Ock, he requests to be euthanized on Earth 2902, which as it turns out, this is the same Earth that is missing an auto, which is more or less the cause of this paradox. So once again, it's one of those things that just sounds too good to be true. With Inferior Ock pretty much requesting to be sent to Earth 2902 to die, or just wither away gracefully, and as it turns out, they just happen to need to send another Ock over there. And so when 616 Auto drops off the Inferior Ock on Earth 2902, we also get 616 Auto's narration with him thinking like he was wrong to provoke the multiverse, or maybe Maybe it was that he just wasn't ready yet, and with everything that's said and done, he may have altered his own destiny. And really, Otto's not really sure like how significant leaving the Inferior Ock on Earth 2902 was. But then also, when we follow the Inferior Ock over to that Earth, and we find that not only is he thriving in that world with plants or just everywhere, but also he's made himself an entire body, which really has him looking like a superior Spider-Man thing. Which then begs the question: like, did the Inferior Ock take TJ with him? Because as far as the people of that Earth are concerned, Spidey's back. But aside from this, the Superior Four, they're back together, they're back on Earth, which from here just overlaps back into Devil's Reign, with the Superior Four closer than ever before, kind of, because there's a bit more that happens in Devil's Reign. But aside from that, Otto and the rest of these guys, they're against Fisk, and they're making moves wherever they can in order to make sure that Fisk doesn't succeed. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. And so now this one wasn't so much a, a long story, but it was dense. And at this point, I'm really not sure why. And I mean, it's possible that parts of this could be explored later on perhaps in an autoverse event, who knows? I'm more curious to know what you guys think, but that'll do it for this one guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.